What's happening, future friends? Welcome to another episode. Today's something fun. We fired the paintbrush up again, doing a painting video showing how I painted these two crankbaits. Now, the whole kind of premise of this video is using the exact same colors to get two quite different looks out of the crankbaits. I'm gonna take you through how I did each of those because Do It launched their own crankbait blanks. And Do It also uh, is launching some pretty cool specials and a chance to win some, uh, some painted baits by myself. If you pick up any of their stuff, I'm painting some baits, send it over to them. Uh, and they're randomly gonna include that. So I'll leave all the details below. I'll kind of walk you through it as I'm painting uh, in my paint booth. It's nothing too crazy special here. I bought one of these off of uh, Amazon. You could buy one of your own or make one of your own. You can buy one, do whatever, but it's got a nice light in it. I really like that. Everything's nice and bright. Uh, some stuff up there, stickers, and then I vent that out through my window over there. I had to build a little frame uh, and make sure you get all those fumes vented out. So enough yapping, I'm gonna take you through a couple of really easy beginner ways to paint crankbaits using one of the lace wraps on some different texturing and using some simple stencils and blending. Again, the exact same colors on both of these crankbaits, but two very different looks. And that, my friends, uh, is the fun of painting is you can get a bunch of different looks without a whole bunch of fancy paints. Uh, and that's what we're doing today. So enough yapping, let's get to painting. All right, so you can see here, I've got some of the Do It crankbaits ready to uh, get primered. Now, Do It is also launching a pretty cool special. You buy four of their crankbait bags and you get a free thing of paint. I'll talk about that more. And Do It also wraps the bills of the lures for you, so you don't have to do that with tape, uh, which is a nice little time saver. And then I'm gonna get to primering the bait. So putting a base coat of white on these, I wanna make sure I cover every angle, top, bottom, side. I'm gonna get all these done. Uh, primering is gonna make the different colors that you put on top a lot brighter. So you can see there, uh, a nice bright white base coat. Now I'm gonna use some of the go-to pearl. This is gonna give kind of that reflective, silvery, glittery look and shine to it. Now while that's drying, I'm gonna put on some fluorescent yellow chartreuse. I'm gonna put this on at an angle as I'm pointing here. I'm gonna spray this at an angle only looking at this side of the bait and as you can see as I layer this on here small layers of paint it's only from the back shooting forward okay so that's my first color with that yellow chartreuse everything else is white now on the second one you can see I've got a cool little holder here for this one it attaches to the uh, the split ring spot there on the bottom where the hook hangs gives you a different way to paint your lures so you can either use the helping hands like on the other one or with this one uh, you can kind of move it around paint one bait look at all the different angles check and make sure the paints even on each side now we're gonna grab a fluorescent blaze orange. Drop some of that in the airbrush here. Always test your paint on some paper. And I'm gonna cover the whole top of this one. So the one that I've got in this little single holder here, I'm gonna cover the whole top of this orange. And that's gonna kind of blend down into that yellow chartreuse. I'm gonna dry it. Again, go in thin layers. I'm gonna put some more paint on. You don't want it to glob up and look gloopy. Uh, so go in layers and dry it. You can see orange on top, chartreuse on bottom. That's, uh, that's gonna be a bright bait, you think, right? Well, we're gonna tone it down. Now for the second one that's in the helping hands, I'm gonna spray the opposite direction. So I sprayed from the back with the chartreuse. I'm gonna spray just from the front on the belly with that orange. You can see kind of that sunfish, bluegill, you know, that orange up front, that orange breast. Now for the one that was in that little single holder, I pulled it off and we're gonna use a lace technique. You can find this stuff on Amazon, fabric stores. And I'm gonna connect it up at the top because that top I'm gonna to do a solid color. So that way if it scratches any of it, it's not a big deal. My solid color's gonna go up there. Make sure you clip this on and it's really, really tight. So that's what I did here with some of these little rubber tipped clips. I clip my lace on and I make sure I want to get it super tight. That way the lines beneath are clean. I'm going to go over the uh, the lace with the white. Again, test it on your paper. Go over lace with a white and even strokes there just like that on and off. I'm going to make sure I hit all sides and I'm going to spray directly at it perpendicular to the bait to try to cover as much of that color as I can. I'm going to dry it. Again, go in thin layers over your bait so you're not just glooping a bunch of it on. It'll kind of puddle up. You don't want that. Next, we're going to go with a red. Test it on your paper and I'm going to shoot this from the back forward on this base. This is going to kind of give a shadowing effect and you'll see this as I add more colors to it, but I'm going to spray directly from the back and I would say, I don't know, like a 40 degree angle maybe? Uh, spray it in that back direction. You can see it looks all red from the back, right? When you turn it forward, most of that front hasn't even been touched. It's white, so it's only hitting part of those holes in the lace and it's kind of leaving white over it. Now on the second bait that's on the helping hands, I'm gonna go with layers of red over the top of this. So this is the one that had the chartreuse and orange on the bottom. I'm gonna blend this red right down into those uh, colors on the bottom. And that's what we're left with on this one. Just simple shading. I'm gonna make sure it's even on both sides. Then I'm gonna reach for the watermelon. This is where we're gonna kind of uh, dull out some of these bright colors. 
Same with I did the red. I'm going to use the watermelon and spray from the front back. Again, at an angle. I'm not spraying straight onto this. I'm spraying at an angle. And again, that's going to hit the white parts that I didn't hit before with the red. I'm going to cover it with some, uh, some of this watermelon, kind of a green pumpkin. Now, in the spots where they both hit, it's going to leave kind of a cool shading effect. And so I kind of mix those colors so you can see it looks green from the front, looks red from the back. This will look a little bit different once we take all of this, uh, this lace off. Now on the second one, we're going to use a stencil. As I said, we're going over two easy things to do, either a, a lace wrap or a stencil. I'm going to use the uh, the bigger, larger stencil up top, and I forgot I wasn't recording when I did it, but the larger stencil up top and on the bottom, I use the smaller stencil. So to kind of give some texturing in different sizes, uh, as you can see here with my stencil, I've got the larger up top and the smaller up bottom. I'm mixing these patterns, the large and the small, to make sure it kind of gives that cool blended look, not just one flat stencil. So this time I remember to turn the camera on and that's what it looks like on top. I also shaded around the eyes with some of that watermelon, that green, just to give the face a little bit darker look. Uh, and you can see how that already kind of mutes out some of those bright colors. Larger on top, smaller on bottom. Now I flipped it over to make sure my sides were even. The right side was just not as far down. So I fixed that. You always want to make sure your stuff looks symmetrical and that looked better to me. So I left it just like that. Hit it with the heat gun to set those colors. Make sure everything's dry so you don't smudge it. Then I grabbed this loop. I think this is like for cross stitching or something they call it. Uh, I put some net in here and it keeps it nice and taut. You can see there. That's what I'm going to use to put over the top of this bait and add kind of a scaling effect to it. So put this on top of the bait. I'm going to kind of press it down on the sides. And with this being rounded, it's kind of tough. You can do it from the sides, uh, but I chose to do it this way because I want to have the scale all on top. Painted the front and then I just kind of rocked it back and did the, the back part of it in two different steps. And you can see there uh, the look that you get that kind of scaling ridged kind of bumped up textured look to the front of it I also sprayed some more green on the front to darken up the uh, the nose now on the second one i was letting that dry over to the side you want to make sure these are nice and dry before you unveil them oh look at that rip it off that last little piece just just rip it off like a band-aid and that's what you're left with you can see uh that the green and the red kind of mix in some of those spots gives it kind of a dark red uh, you've got the green shooting forward you've got some of the, the red on back now at the top, I want to darken that up, so I put some green on. Again, I was not recording, so there's the, the green on it, or that watermelon, I should say. And this is what I'm left with. These are the two different blanks, two different styles, the exact same colors on each bait, but two totally different looks. We're going to hit this with a little iridescent shad back black. This is going to be like a pearlescent black look. Now, always make sure you test on paper. And this is what I do. I make some little dots, make sure my paint's flowing smoothly, do some circles and stuff, just to make sure my paint is coming out correctly. So for the stencil pattern here, I'm going to put some black up on top. I want to darken this. Now I'm going to do it in little spritzes. See, I'm kind of flicking the uh, the trigger there. I'm going to flick that on there and it's going to give it a pretty cool, well, let me just show you. It's going to give it a cool splatter pattern. And as you can see here, as I throw this on, I turn my air pressure down just a little bit and kind of throw all these different splatters on dots out. That's one way to do it. Uh, that's what I'm doing here is kind of finishing it up and then just darkening the, the front by the nose and the eyes. I want that top to have a contrast, some of that black uh, with some of that green. And this is what we're left with. So you've got the scales, you've got the splatters on top, and some of that's going to kind of come down the side, but the bottom is still pretty clean. That's what, that's the, the look we're looking for on that one. Pretty easy for beginners to do with just a simple stencil. Now for the, uh, the second one, we're going to use a different texture using a sponge. This is some like living sponge I got off of Amazon for cheap, and I'm just going to dab it. Now I want to make sure I get all the globs off and I get to the point where you can see there, it's just kind of given like a random texture pattern. I'm going to put that on the top of the bait. You can kind of take it some down the sides like I'm doing here. On the top, you can do as much or as little as you want. The cool part of this, though, is it gives like a 3D look over your pattern. You can see they're kind of a natural look. It's broken up. It's not symmetrical. Just a different way to, uh, to texture that. Next, it's time for the eyes. The eyes, uh, I'm using some of their Hyper HD eyes from Do It. They come in different sizes. This is a six millimeter for this. They've got like the moon look down eyes, the red moon look down eyes. We're going to use some of those. Uh, on this first pattern, you can see there, they're red, goldish. And that look down pattern is fun because it really brings these to life, almost like they're looking back down behind themselves at whatever bass is going to eat them. And you can see, look at, look at how it just brings the bait to life. That look down eye is cool. I really like the looks of those. And I painted around the eye there to make it dark so it kind of contrasts. Going to do the same thing. You can see other side, no eye, with the eye. It just brings the bait to life, one little eye. Same thing on the other side, grab my eye off the sheet. I just use my uh, my scalpel or X-Acto knife. 
that's what we're left with. Looks pretty sweet. Oh, and don't forget to take the uh, the plastic off the bill or tape if you tape them. Uh, get that taken off there, and that's the finished product. Looks pretty dang schnazzy, I think. For the second one, we're going to use some of the HD Realize. Now, you'll notice they come with two cards, one looking to the left and one looking to the right. That way, your eyes are symmetrical and correct on each side of the bait. So I'm going to take this side off here for the right side of the bait. Put that on here and you want the point of the eye looking forward. And I'll kind of give you a close up here. Uh, place it on with my X-Acto knife there. And the point of the eye is gonna look forward. That's how they are in most fish. You see the point there pointing forward toward the nose. That's the look you want. I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side with the point of the uh, eye looking forward. Uh, again, take your tape off and that's the finished product on this one. Same colors two different methods to make two different lures uh, with the same colors. Turned out pretty dang cool. All right, fishing friends, there you have it. Two baits, same colors, just a couple little different techniques. You end up with something like this. I hope you enjoyed. Again, this is some easy stuff that any beginner can do. Um, if you use the tips that I tried to share throughout that whole video, it will help. A lot of it I've had to kind of learn on my own. You know, I've watched other people, uh, and that's what I always encourage people. Watch from all different sources and absorb as much as you can. Now, again, don't forget the promos that do it is running. You buy four packs of their, uh, their crankbait blanks. You get a free bottle of the Bait Blast paint. Normally this stuff's like, what, 12 bucks for a four ounce deal, uh, which is not bad. And they have all the paints running uh, at 20% off. Now the good part is that runs until the 28th of January. And anybody that, that buys into that, that buys the four uh, packs of blanks and gets one of these free, they're doing a random golden ticket drawing uh, and they're gonna give away five. They said five of my baits, but I think I might bump that up to 10. I might do 10 just so we can have some more winners. Paint 10 Debo custom baits and anybody that puts in the order of buying four of these and getting the one free bottle of paint, uh, you'll be entered in a chance to get one of my free lures. Now, if you don't have the money or don't want to do that, but uh, but you like the lures, I'm going to give away these two, these exact two lures that you saw me paint in this video. All you have to do is comment below and let me know. Are you into airbrushing? Are there any things I could be doing different? Do you like the voiceover? I feel like I can focus on painting, getting good angles with the camera, and then trying to walk you through it afterwards. I think it's a little bit cleaner, but I don't know. Comment below and let me know. So again, huge shout out to the folks over at Do It. I appreciate them sending me blanks to paint, um, you know, taking care of me with paint and such. I really appreciate them. I'll leave my link below, of course, with Do It. Uh, so if you do pick up anything over there, consider using my link. It just shows them I sent you. But that's enough for me for today. Today's subscribe feature friends, my guy, Arthur Fish Daddy 401 uh, If you watch my lives or any of my videos, he's a good supporter uh, and he's also a bait maker. I'll leave him link below. Uh, he makes soft plastics. I don't know if he'll ever get into the airbrushing and jig stuff, but he makes some killer soft plastics. So Arthur, thank you. And thank you all the other small bait companies, uh, you know, guys like me in our basements and our garages making baits and stuff. It's a lot of fun. You can make whatever you want. Uh, you've got the freedom to do your own colors, you know, styles. And if you run out of them, you can just make more on your own. So thank you to you all. Uh, I appreciate you. I got to get out of here and edit. So thank you all for watching. And until next time.